This tutorial is going to show you how to use the Mojis plugin with GarageBand. I've already got the plugin installed on my computer, so I'm going to create an empty project. And I want to make sure that my audio interface is set up correctly in GarageBand's preferences. So under Audio MIDI, I can see that my input device is the name of my audio interface. This may be different for you depending on your sound card. I want to make sure that audio units are enabled, as the plugin we'll use is an audio unit. I'm then going to create a new track, and we're going to select the record using a microphone or line input, since the Mojis is a line input. And let's enable the option, I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. I'm just going to delete this default track now, so we just have this. I want to see the properties for my audio track, so I'm going to click on the Smart Controls button. Now GarageBand kind of hides the options to use external plugins and audio units, but it is possible. So you want to go down and click on the I button here, and click on the drop down beside Plugins, and you can see that you've got this list of possible inserts. So if the Mojis plugin doesn't appear, there's a little trick that you may have to try to make appear. So if you click on the little circle beside Input, and convert it into a stereo track, that will allow you to load the Mojis plugin. GarageBand doesn't like mono to stereo plugins, so you need to set it to a stereo track first before loading the plugin. And then you can go ahead afterwards and click on this button again to make it mono input again. So if this is the first time that you've used the Mojis software, you will have to register. If you've registered before, even on an iOS device, all you have to do is log in. But for now, I'm going to enter my email going to create a password. You can find your registration code on the little quick start sheet, um, which is included inside your Mojis package. You'll need to be connected to the internet for the first time you register your Mojis. Okay, now I'm going to get my Mojis. I've taken off the cap and I'm going to stick it to this old frying pan. It needs to be attached very firmly, so much so that there should be quite a lot of resistance if I try to take it back off. And remember, if the sticky pad gets dirty, and loses its adhesiveness, you can just peel it off, wash it under some water, and wait for it to dry before putting it back on. I'm then going to plug it into the 3.5 to quarter inch adapter, and I'm going to plug this standard guitar cable into the adapter, and then into channel one of my audio interface. I then want to set the correct level, so I'm going to select a microphone input, and I'm going to start tapping with this pen as loudly as I believe I will be playing, and increase the gain on my preamp gradually. It's very important that it doesn't go into the red and start clipping. If it's clipping, then the Mojis plugin will be far worse at the gesture recognition. So I can now see that if I tap my object, I've got some level coming in here, and it's not going into the red or clipping, so that's a good level. And I've got uh, input monitoring turned on as well, so we can hear the result. So here is the Mojis plugin. There are four sound engines. You can just click on the icons to select between them. Each sound engine has a list of sound presets. You can just click on this drop-down menu and select the one that you want. You can also fine-tune these presets by moving the sliders around also. You can change the pitch just by clicking on a note on the keyboard. Or you can change the octave by using these minus one or plus one labels. Unfortunately, GarageBand does not support external MIDI. This means that you are not able to use the MIDI input functionality to control the pitch of the Mojis plugin um, from other tracks. Or you're also not able to use Mojis as a MIDI controller within GarageBand. So if you want to use this functionality, then you will have to use a more fully featured DAW like Logic or Ableton or Reaper. We can still, though, of course, use Mojis gesture recognition to trigger different sounds using the default sound engines within the plugin. So with Mojis, you can assign different types of hits or strikes to play different notes or sounds. First, you need to train the plugin to recognize these different types of strikes. And we call these different types of taps or scratches or hits. We call them gestures. So I want my first gesture to be tapping my thumb on the edge of the handle of this frying pan. And I want it to trigger a bass note. So I'm going to click on the plus icon. I'll just change my sound preset to be mute bass and middle C. And I'm going to perform my first gesture at least a dozen times. Now it's very important that I only see one dot appear each time I hit the pan. 
If more than one dot appears with each tap, then I'd want to go into my advanced settings and increase the trigger threshold and begin the training process from scratch. If no dots are appearing, then I will want to reduce my trigger threshold so that it picks up quieter onsets. The trigger time slider sets the number of hits or onsets that will be detected within a certain number of milliseconds. So if I'm playing on a rattly or wobbly surface like a cymbal or something that shakes a lot, I may want to increase the trigger time so that it only recognizes my hit and not the object shaking afterward. Okay, so back to my first gesture. I'm going to tap a dozen times, giving it a variety of amplitudes and playing around the area. Not always exactly on the same spot. Once I'm happy, I'm going to select Done. And now this circle represents my first gesture. So if I click on it, I can then select my sound preset or change any of the parameters for this sound. Now I'm going to train a second gesture. This time I'm going to use my thumb on the edge. So I'm going to click on plus again. I'm going to select the same sound preset, but choose a new note. And again, I'm going to provide it with at least a dozen examples of my gesture. So it's very important, again, that I provide a variety of the gesture by playing around the area that I want to associate the sound to and giving it some dynamics, just as if I were performing. And click Done again. So now I've got two gestures and the plugin will recognize each one as being independent. In order to be recognized as distinct, gestures need to be quite different from one another. So for example, if I were to train a third gesture using my thumb on the other edge of the pan, you'll see that the circles will be overlapping. This means that the plugin thinks that these gestures are too similar to each other and will have a hard time telling them apart. So what I'm going to do is right click on this last gesture or control click it to delete it. And instead of using my thumb on the edge, I'm going to use this pen instead. And I'm going to select that sound and change the sound preset associated with it. So now I've got three gestures. If you've got a few emojis and you want to use them at the same time, you can just duplicate this track and run two instances of the plugin at the same time, as long as you've got your input selected to the appropriate channel. You can then go ahead and apply whatever effects you want after the Mojis plugin to change the sound of it. And hopefully you'll have a bit of fun with it. So that's all for the Using Mojis with GarageBand tutorial. If you've got any questions, head over to mojis.co.uk forward slash form. And thanks for watching.